Hello and Namaste. My name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic time series. In this video, we will learn about time series plot basics. Most importantly, how not to misrepresent, misconstrue, or flat out make mistakes when representing time series data. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get started. Visual considerations. Time series visualizations fall into two basic types, static and interactive. We will discuss concepts that apply to both. Static visualizations are mainly found in print materials, PDFs, and so on. Most software programs and websites now allow for some level of basic interactivity with time series charts. So Excel, of course, Power BI, Tableau, some R or Python tools, Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, government websites, and so on. And this is just a small list of many. Regarding interactivity, Complex interactivity is rarely better, especially when the viz is shared with collaborators and or stakeholders. It can create cognitive overload. It is very important to keep both static and interactive time series charts as simple as possible and only include what is absolutely necessary to get your point across. And finally, you may want to limit or lock down how the viz can be manipulated. When doing interactive charts, it's usually best to put guardrails around what the end user can do. It is much better to create several visualizations with minimal interactivity than one visualization that has a lot of interactivity. Basic components. Here we have a chart of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in Johannesburg, South Africa, going all the way back to 2006. So what are the basic components here? Of course, on the bottom we have time. So usually in a time series chart, almost always, time will be along the x-axis or the bottom axis. Then we have the level. Oftentimes in time series charts, you will see the level on the right-hand side of the chart. Now that makes sense. We are usually interested in the most recent data in time series charts. So whereas in other charts and statistics and other data science applications, we'll often see the level or the values on the left side of the axis. Here we'll often see them on the right. You could do either or, but oftentimes in time series, you'll see it more often on the right. And then in this chart on Yahoo Finance, we have lots of interactivity. We can select certain events to mark on the graph. We have a date range. We can compare more than one exchange or asset on the chart. We can select different intervals, lines. We can draw on it. We can do all kinds of things in this interactive chart. So these are the three basic components, time, level, and where applicable, interactivity. Things to consider in your time series plots. Zoom level, value scale, value transformations, trend lines, smoothing lines, and use of color. Note that time series visuals are disproportionately easy to manipulate, twist, and misconstrue, for better or worse. So oftentimes you will see visuals that are confusing or are outright manipulative in terms of some of these considerations. The zoom level can be manipulated. The value scale can be manipulated. The values can be transformed in a certain way to make it look how the user wants you to see it. Trend lines and smoothing lines in conjunction with zoom level can misconstrue data and use of color can make it hard to read. These are not all the considerations to keep in mind, but these are the basic considerations. Now let's look at several examples of these. Zoom level for a time series plot. The zoom level of a plot can have drastic effects on the visual interpretation of a time series. To the right are a five year and a year to date plot for Tesco, a British multinational grocery store retailer. Each chart tells a very different story. So you can see at the top, we have the five year chart. On the bottom, we have the year to date chart. The orange box in the top chart shows what we're looking at in the bottom chart, just zoomed in on the time scale. The five year shows typical ups and downs, but no real trend, while the year to date shows a definite downward trend. So depending on what zoom level we're looking at across time, we can have a drastically different interpretation of the time series plot. Value scale for a time series plot. So on the right are two year to date plots for Tesco. So these are both year to date. That's the same company in the last slide. The chart on the top uses the default value scale on the right that's provided by Yahoo. 
The bottom version has been adjusted to use the same value scale as the five-year plot from before. Each chart tells a very different story. So look at the value scale or the level over on the right. We can see that on the top, we have a very granular scale that goes from about 240 to 310. On the bottom, we have a value scale that goes from about 200 all the way up to 350. And the result is that the downward trend appears much more drastic on the more granular level on top versus the one on the bottom. So by changing the level or value scale of the chart, you can emphasize or de-emphasize certain trends. And it's very important to make sure the data is being represented correctly or at least consistently across different graphs. Value transformation for a time series plot. In this case, logarithmic. The top time series plot shows the period from early 2020 to second quarter 2021 when the price of a well-known cryptocurrency exploded. The value went parabolic, which is a catchphrase for rapidly increasing growth, not steady linear growth. When the value scale is changed to a logarithmic scale, as can be seen on the right, the time series flattens out somewhat. So on the top, we have the actual untransformed values. And on the bottom, we have the chart in logarithmic scale. And you'll notice if you look in the orange box, the distance between each equal value level is not even. Now, I personally don't really like how Yahoo does these, but the basic idea is the same. A very important thing to learn here is that if you're looking at the level or the value on an axis and it says log, and visually the data follows a straight line, the underlying data is not a straight line. It is definitely curved either up or down. So a time series showing steady growth on a log scale is actually growing at a percentage rate, which is a curve, just like compound interest would work in your savings account, well, maybe in the old days, in your savings account, investment accounts, or whatever else. So a linear graph on a log scale is actually a percentage growth, either up or down or some other direction. So the characteristics of the value scale or the level and any transformations that are being done are crucial to understanding and interpreting whatever we're trying to get across in our time series plot. Value transformation for a time series plot percentage change. Same idea here. The top time series plot shows the period from early 2020 to second quarter 2021 when the price of a well-known cryptocurrency exploded. Same thing as before. The value went parabolic, which is a catchphrase for rapidly increasing growth, not steady growth over time. Now, when the value scale is changed to percentage change over time in this case, the starting point is set to zero. Then all values are shown relative to the start and percentage terms, which can intuitively make more sense to the reader or to the end user. So in the time series plot on the top, we have the raw data, the actual price of this cryptocurrency over time. Now on the bottom, we have it represented as percentage change from when we started our graph. And it's always dependent on when you start. So here we started, it seems, at the beginning of 2020. Now, if we started in mid-2020, our zero point would be probably a different number. So it's always relative to the start point. The percentage change graph can be very useful for end users. So this cryptocurrency started at a value of about 10,000, and that's our starting point. Now, over time, of course, it went up. So let's look at where it doubled. So in November or December of 2020, we can see that it reached a level of 20,000. Now, if we go down to our graph on the bottom, we'll see that corresponds with an increase of 100%. So an increase of 100% means the value doubled and then so on and so forth. So we can see that a value of 60,204 corresponds to a percentage change of 564.84%. And because percentages are relative, it can sometimes be easier to explain the value of data over time. Trend lines for a time series plot. Both charts on the right show the same time period from January 1st through July 24th for SNAP. The top is 2021 and the bottom is 2022. Same period of time, just two different years. 
a trend line can show the average change over time for the selected period in value scale. Trend lines can be very useful when comparing the same slice of time, all else being equal. So if we want to know how SNAP did the first half of 2021 versus the first half of 2022, we can look at both of these charts, plot a trend line. We can see on the top, the value was pretty steady across time. Of course, it had ups and downs, but overall, it averaged out to be pretty flat. Whereas on the bottom in 2022, there was a definite downward trend. Trend lines do not have to be straight lines necessarily, but they usually are. Smoothing for a time series plot. Both charts to the right are five year time periods. The top is Tech Mahindra in India, and the bottom is Inditex in Spain. The blue line in the chart is the weekly aggregated price. The orange line is a seven day moving average and the pink line is a 30 day moving average. Notice how the longer the period of the moving average, the smoother the line. Also note that Inditex seems to be more jagged than Tech Mahindra. But of course, these are two very different indices, so the value scales are not the same, so the difference may be deceptive. In this case, if we're comparing these two, this might be a good application of the percentage change time plot. But what I wanted to show you here is how the moving averages compare to the weekly aggregated data, with the underlying idea being that the longer the moving average period, the smoother the line is going to be, and that also means the longer the time period of the moving average, the less susceptible that moving average will be to sudden changes in level. Color for a time series plot. So the blue line is a weekly aggregated price like before. The orange line is the seven day moving average and the pink line is a 30 day moving average. It is very important to use proper color technique for color charts and limit the data ink ratio which means we wanna keep things basically as simple as possible. Charts with accessibility in mind, so no red or green together. So about 10% of the male population has red green color blindness, just depends on where you are and things like that. But on average, eight to 10% of males have red green color blindness. So if you were to put a red line and a green line together on the same chart, they're going to look gray. So notice that's why I used colorblind friendly colors for the moving average lines, blue lines, orange lines, and pink lines. It is no accident that data visualization packages such as Excel, Tableau, Power BI, and others have defaulted to a blue orange color scheme because in the past it used to be red green. And once we got into accessibility and making sure everything is readable by everyone, we went to blue orange instead of red green. And pink, believe it or not, is a colorblind friendly color. Simple is usually better. Additional charts are usually better than one crowded chart. So that wraps up this video on time series plot basics. There is much, much more we could have discussed, especially in the realm of interactivity, and I'm sure we will get to that. But these fundamental things are important to make sure you do not misrepresent, misconstrue, or make mistakes when creating time series plots and then communicating them to end users or other stakeholders. Therefore, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for your valuable time, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.